Hello again, everyone. I have a very small Jackson's haul today. I haven't been getting a lot of things from Jackson's lately just because I have so many art supplies that, you know, unless something is kind of new and exciting that comes out, there's not really a reason for me to buy any new watercolors or or things like that because I have a pretty good collection of watercolors now and uh, it'll take me a while to get through the ones that I have. But these three items were something that, uh, well, so, <laughs> this particular item, which I'm gonna open here in a minute, is not new, but I finally got around to getting it. Uh, basically, this is a fairly expensive item, but I had some affiliate money, and it kind of brought down the price to something that's a little more reasonable for me. And uh, this is a new paintbrush from Jan Jackson's. They issued a whole line of paintbrushes called the Kite, brushes and they are synthetic sable so I think they're 100% synthetic and uh, I they have a variety of sizes they have round brushes they have you know all kinds of different shapes but I got the uh, dagger brush in the 1 4th inch in the non travel br brush version actually I don't know that they have travel brushes in the kite line but um, but the, I, I've been very impressed with all of the Jackson's brushes that I have to date. Um, and also I have to apologize for some of my um, fountain pen ink on my hands. That's just something that happens a lot. This is even with, um, well, I probably got ink on my hands after washing them with the lava soap. But um, I was changing out some nibs and that generally is kind of messy. Uh, but like I was saying, I'm very, I've been very impressed with all of the Jackson's brand brushes that I have tried. This one I'm going to actually test out for you today with this other item. Actually, I think I'm going to try and test all three in one little com combination thing, and you'll see here in a minute how that's going to work. And then this, so this is liquid charcoal from Schmincke. So it comes in a little tube, I believe, um, and I, I already have some liquid charcoal paints. I think they have like one or two brands. Um, but basically what this is, is it's essentially charcoal in a uh, medium and then it is in this tube. I'm Usually it is um, the same kind of medium as uh, watercolors. Let's see, does it say? Mm, no, so, but I think, but generally you can use this together with watercolor or you can use it all by itself, obviously. Um, on the back it just says natural pigment made of careful, careful carbonization of grape seeds. Well, I assume that's grape seeds, not grape seeds, but I don't know, maybe it is grape seeds. Oh, gum Arabic base. So yeah, so that's the same uh, base that you would get in watercolor no animal ingredients and uh, dilutable with water, which I'm gonna do today. So you can use it like watercolor, but you'll see um, it's a lot less messy than just working with dry charcoal. I really, really love the look of charcoal. Obviously you're gonna get a whole different look with the charcoal in this kind of form, <clears throat> but you can still get that, the tone of the charcoal, which, which I like. And then it talks about pigment, PBK8. I assume is just the charcoal. Yeah, here on the front it says grapeseed black. <clears throat> so um, they actually had three different versions of this. <clears throat> this being the grapeseed black, which I guess is made out of grape seeds. And then there was a peach black, which maybe is made out of peach seeds <laughs> or peach pits. And um, I forget what the other one was, but this one appealed to me the most just based on the <clears throat> samples that they had on their website. So we'll see, but I only got this one and I don't intend to get more because it'll take me a while to use this. So uh, let's go ahead and open this so you can see what this is. They always package their uh, orders in eco packaging. So it's you know recycled materials and all of that. So this is the Drawing Compass Iris. So to a certain extent, this is kind of a frivolous purchase because I have stamps that I can use to make circles to do, uh, you know, color charts and that sort of thing with watercolor. But this is actually really versatile if you are going to be mixing a lot of color charts, which I, I do quite often. Um, it looks like there is a little bit of tape on the side. I'm going to get my little knife and cut that. 
so that we can get into this container here. Okay. And so there we go. And it's really beautiful just as an object. <laughs> so it's the drawing compass, the circle drawing tool that inspires creativity. So the one, the one limitation or the one thing that I thought was a little bit irritating, not necessarily irritating, but um, a limitation is that it, it, the, cir the maximum circumference is fairly small. I mean, I suppose you could do the outside too. So you could have um, the outside surface as well, but then you also have this little iris on the inside where you can adjust the size of the circle you want to make, which is kind of cool. And um, from other reviewers who've reviewed this online, I, they've indicated that this little circle bit here is a little bit sharp. So I probably would not use this with fountain pens, certainly because I wouldn't want to scratch up the nibs or you know damage the nibs in any way. But I do have a mechanical pencil here that I'm going to use today. This is a carry, uh, a Pentel carry mechanical pencil. It has a very light lead in it. It's a it's very hard lead. It's like H4. So the line will be pretty light when I draw it, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle and then I'm going to put the, a little sample of the liquid charcoal in the middle of the circle and then essentially swatch it out within that circle with my new brush. So first off, I have to decide what size circle I want. So there's a little red indicator here, which you can barely see. Uh, that shows you the size of your circle. And I'm assuming that this is centimeters because you know this is sort of a, not, not necessarily made for the American market item. Uh, Design UK, manufacture China. China, really? Well, that's a bummer. Um, especially given how expensive it is. But uh, as long as it continues to work, that'll be, that'll be the test of it. But, um, Let's see. So let's, I'm going to go ahead with three, I'm going to go with three and a half centimeters here. So that circle here will be three and a half centimeters wide. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to put that off to the side here. This little thing goes into your circle to essentially tell you where the middle of the circle is. Um, that's the middle of the circle when it's, it's full size. So I'm not, I'll have to look and see how this might be useful. I mean, I guess you could do that first before you draw your circle. Um, so you would put that there and then mark your circle. Cause no matter what the, the center will be the same regardless of the size of the circle. That's just the nature of a circle. So, um, so I suppose you could do that, but I haven't used this yet. Look, I literally just opened it in front of you. So we'll see. Um, so it, it says instructions, body, rotating upper ring, inner aperture and measurement gauge, wooden base, also used as centering tool. Wooden base. I don't know what that means. Oh, you can put it in there. <laughs> that was totally just on the fly. I, um, oh, cause the picture did show that. <laughs> So you can actually hold it and display it on your desk, which is kind of cool. Um, it'll be like that on your desk. Yeah, kind of cool. And um, let's see. Aperture adjusts to freely create circles of 3 to 70 millimeters. Oh, so that's millimeters. Uh, on almost any flat surface, circle drawing without center uh, point marks that damage your surface. Yeah, so if you used a compass which I don't use a lot, actually, um, probably for that very reason. You have to put a sharp little point in the middle of your circle so that you can draw it with the pencil or pen or whatever is attached to your compass. Uh, and so this way you won't get that hole in the paper in the middle. So that's kind of convenient. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Measures the diameter of flat circles and tubes. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. I don't know when I would ever use that. Handling and use place iris on a flat surface. Rotate the ring, which we just did. The measurement uh, gauge aids with attaining precise dimensions, which is very important. <laughs> I, I'm not very precise in just about anything with art-related stuff. 
The measurement gauge aids with attaining precise dimensions. Alternatively, hold iris in both hands with thumb in front and forefinger behind. Gently rotate the upper ring. Oh, so you could leave it here and then push it, push it around while it's on the thing. Only turn iris from its top face, not the sides. Okay, fair enough. Circle drawing. Use any writing tool to draw circles, arcs, or circular shaded areas. Oh yeah, I guess you could not draw the circle, but just shade in this entire area on your paper. Circle measuring. Simply place iris over any smaller circle. Oh, so I, th I think we can figure that out. <laughs> uh, and then read the measurement gauge once you've, fig you've adjusted this to the same size as the circle. Using a given center, open iris to its maximum diameter and place the centering tool against the inside edge. Move them both until the centering tool's apex meets with the given center point. Okay. So, I mean, it's pretty simple instructions, really. And here you can see the little example on the front. But I just thought this was kind of a cool idea and again, it's kind of a frivolous purchase. It's certainly not something that is necessary, <laughs> but it is pretty cool. Okay, so I have some uh, Pentallic watercolor paper here, and uh, that's what I'm gonna use to draw my circle and then get the, um, do the sample of the uh, liquid water or liquid charcoal. So I'm I'm not going to do a very big circle, obviously. Uh, actually, you know, let's go ahead and go to four. Let's let's give it a little bit more space. Let's go the other direction. Okay. So yeah, let's go to four because that'll give us a little bit more room. And this generally will not move. It's 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 um. It has a little bit of uh, like a rubber grip on the back, so that's nice. So once you figure out where you want your circle, you can just put it there and that's pretty much gonna be where it's gonna be. Yeah, and I already have some tip there. All right, well, that was actually super duper easy. And then to close it, I will, oh, the other way, I will move that there and then seven millimeters is the circumference of the or the uh, width of the maximum circle but you know for for swatches and color charts and that sort of thing that is going to be plenty big and like i said if you really wanted a bigger one a little good to go a little bit bigger you could go around the edge i would probably do that to use the bigger circle around the edge okay so for now i'm just going to put this in the box and then I'm also going to put this back as well at some point I may put it on my desk but for now I'm going to leave it like that all right let's go ahead and cap the pencil and then I have some water off to the side so I'm going to um, moisten this brush it didn't seem like it had much if any um, material you know, that, that they use to kind of keep the brush shape while it's not sold. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It's it's gonna be stiffer than some brushes because this is trying to emulate a Kalinsky Sable brush. Okay, now, now comes the hard part because I have to see if this is going to explode on me. Okay, good. Because <laughs> that makes it a little easier because I was just gonna put a dollop in the middle Seems like there's a bit of air in this container because I am still pushing and it is still, okay. So that is probably enough for that circle. It's probably more than what I need actually. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit more water to my brush here. And then let's just brush out and go to the edges. I'm gonna dip again in the water and with this particular um, liquid charcoal, this is actually much nicer than the other liquid charcoal I have. It flows much nicer. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this actually. Um, I mean, you can make it any darkness you want. You could make it really, really dark. I'm making it sort of a mid-tone. I'm actually gonna turn my paper so that I can get sort of a perfect circle here. Trying to follow the line on the outside. There you go. 
And you know, whether or not it will show brush marks varies uh, depending on your brush and the surface you're using. I'm trying to get a little bit more texture in here so that you can see sort of some different, different um, shades that you could get out of this. But you could, you could essentially use it like watercolor, which is really cool. Okay. And that brush is really nice. It's very precise because it is a little bit harder. I'm actually going to zoom in even more so you can see that swatch a little bit more. So there you go. And you can create, you know, water effects with this. You could drop water in. Like if I dropped water in here, it will bloom like that a little bit, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's essentially like watercolor, especially since it's in a watercolor medium like that. But, uh, and it can be used with watercolor, like I was saying. And it's really good for, you know, doing shading and drawings and everything. But you can see it's pretty interesting already. I added some more water up here. Here's sort of a darker tone. I mean, it's almost like a moon right now because of the way I've done my little sample here. Um, and then, you know, I was able to get a very perfect circle. You know, this will probably be perfect for uh, drawing moons, <laughs> um, which is one of my favorite subjects, although I don't generally draw moons because I don't like to draw perfect circles. But um, now I could do that. Um, so that's just one possibility with this thing. All right. So let me zoom back out. And then we'll get one last look at all of these items. So I will put a link down below to each of these products. And uh, with Jackson's, I do get affiliate money, but it's no more for you. It's the same cost for you, but I get a very small percentage <laughs> of whatever you end up getting at Jackson's. But the main reason why I recommend Jackson's is because for one, their prices are really good. Uh, you can get a lot of items that you can't get in at United States art stores readily. Um, they also have a lot of really great products in their own Jackson's line, like this brush, for example. Um, so I really do believe in them. It's not just, you know, I'm trying to make money off my channel and believe me, it's, it's very little that I get, but, but it's, but any that I do get is appreciated because it like for here, it did bring down the price of the Iris drawing compass. Um, but, uh, but like I said, it's no more to you to buy from Jackson's and I really do think they're a great company. Their shipping to the United States does vary, uh, depending on, uh, multiple factors of which I don't know what they are <laughs> or why, because some days I'll go and I'll get free shipping. Like this was free shipping for these items. And then some days it'll be, you know, very low shipping, like $3, um, and then sometimes it'll be like $15 for shipping. Although usually that's for larger items. I think when you do smaller items, items, the shipping is not that much. And part of it could have to do with the whole COVID scenario and, you know, shipping not being as, as easy as before and costing more probably. So, uh, and a few people have asked me if there, if you need to pay a duty in the United States when you order from Jackson's or, or any other overseas companies, I have never paid a duty. Um, I think that's more of a concern if you are in the EU um, or in other places in the world where they do charge a duty for, for goods brought into the United States that are, that are mail ordered. As far as I know, there, I mean, I have never paid a duty and I don't think that that is a requirement for getting things from the UK. So I just wanted to answer that because since I gotten that question quite a bit. So that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. All right, take care. Bye.